Good morning, Devils fans. It is finally here. The end of the off season has come tomorrow. We will actually get some Devils on the ice that we will be seeing in the regular season. Now, obviously, we're not getting games that actually matter quite yet or anything like that. Heck, tomorrow, I don't think we're actually even going to see guys on ice, as typically that first day of training camp is physicals. Uh, so we will get the official roster and all that, which we'll be able to talk about, actually see if Luke is attending, which I know is some contention within the community, but the likes of Nemich, uh, everyone we saw at the prospect um, camp and etc. should all be there. Uh, we'll also, you know, see some returning names as well. I doubt Holtz is going to be there, uh, but we should see Stillman, Villain, Philman, all those fun rhyming names. Um, today's video though, I really did want to recap the off season with all the moves in and out uh, with the organization that the team has made from the really, really big ones to even some of the minor moves that you might not quite remember or even noticed happened. So we're really just going to jump into that with the first thing that technically did happen for us in the offseason here. And that was when we signed Damon Severson to an eight-year contract extension. Something none of us saw coming. We didn't think we could afford to keep him. And, well, well, we couldn't because we traded him the very next second over to Columbus for a nice third-round pick, which uh, ended up being flipped later on, uh, which I will get to here in just a moment. Um, I think this was a great deal. Obviously, we were losing Severson for absolutely nothing. And then we get a third round pick uh, that ended up being used very, very well uh, for an asset that could have just walked and we would have been fine with. I mean, he could have walked. We would have gotten nothing. No one would have thought anything of it. But instead, we get a third rounder. And I mean, that's just a fantastic piece of work done there by Tommy Fitz. Six days later, June 15th, we get Jas Jesper Bratt's eight-year contract extension, $63 million. We all love this deal. Bratt is going to be here for a very long time, hopefully, likely, a career devil as well. And yeah, um, he is locked up at a great uh, AAV for what he brings to this roster and team. We have him signed through what should be some of his best years on the team as well. Uh, obviously going into your 30s expecting some aging curve there but really should not be too bad especially someone of his play style and skill uh, this is not signing him into his mid to late 30s this is ending an eight-year deal ending in the early 30s so you absolutely love to see that uh, minor deal came a few days later uh, well before that, we had another nice contract extension a week later with Eric Holla signing his three-year extension. I did a talk extensively about this one as well. Should be a great deal for at least those first two years. The third deal year of that deal might be a little rough, but the way it was structured makes it movable if we absolutely needed to. But I could see Holla being serviceable enough uh, that he will live out the life of the contract here. But, you know, it's he's a depth piece now. He's a bottom six guy. So nothing too crazy. Uh, he is worth the cap hit that he is being paid. And he got a bit of contract security, which he has been looking for throughout his career. And honestly, he has been worth every penny just with that Kane Suck bracelet. And the rivalry that is almost brewing just through him alone, even if there is history between both organizations way before he was playing for either. So yeah, uh, absolutely love that deal. It is uh, great to have him back. A few days after that, we did trade uh, for Shane Bowers for Riley Walsh. This is obviously just really a depth move. Nothing too crazy going on in that sense. Really, it was doing right by Walsh, who has been in this organization ever since we drafted him. He was basically log jammed out and there was no path for him making it onto this team. So we sent him back to the Boston area where he has attended school, grew up, everything. I mean, he's a Boston guy, really. And so just doing right by him. And we get Shane Bowers, which is really just an AHL piece for us. Maybe could he become something? Wouldn't bet on it, but he got something for an asset we weren't going to end up using anyway. And again, something I do love that this organization, especially Tom uh, and even Ray before him, has done with a lot of our guys, that is taking care of them. Uh, even if we don't see a pathway for us here, we'll move you somewhere, try and do what's right by you. Uh, and I think that is really good to see for any free agent or college player, especially that is looking to sign with the team. They know that they could come here. And if they don't force their way on the roster, hey, we're going to move you somewhere that you do have a chance of making it. The very next day, the big trade that came with that third round pick we got from Severson, that was Tyler Toffoli coming in. 
with Yegor Sharangovich on the way out. Obviously, we are getting the older player with only one year left on his deal, but he just had a 30-plus goal season, 70-plus points, is an absolute stud on the right wing, which was a spot we really needed another right shot as. And losing Yeezy is not the worst thing, but it's not the best either. I mean, he's a young guy who definitely showed a lot of promise. Was he ever going to be someone that put up the type of points Tyler does? Probably not, but... He could have been a solid middle six guy for us for years to come. So, I mean, you got to give to get. And this, in everyone's opinion, was definitely the right type of give to get type trade. Very next day, Timo Meyer comes in. Eight-year deal. Finally got it done. We were very confident it was going to happen. But a lot of pundits obviously weren't sure if we could afford both him and Brett. Well, within, what was that, two weeks of each other? They're both here. Eight years, long-term. We are set up and stacked for the future. I've talked about this extensively over multiple uh, different platforms and videos. Love the deal. Love Timo. He's exactly what this team needed for the full regular season and playoff type hockey. He just brings a facet of the game we did not really have, especially on the front end. So he is very easily and quickly, if he's not already, going to be a fan favorite after a full season of him here. Very much so looking forward to seeing what he can do when he is actually acclimated to the team over a full season. Next day, Shane Bowers was brought in. He gets a one-year, two-way contract. Good for him. See what he can do down there in Utica for us. And again, hey, injuries happening in the NHL. Maybe he forces his way into a situation just from that. A very, very minor piece here. We had Jace Hallrook. Hallrook? who was in our system. Uh, he became an unrestricted free agent as we did not qualify him. And so he has moved on uh, in that first year of free agency from our organization. Michael McLeod technically became a UFA, but the very sec next second later signed a one-year deal with us. Talked extensively about that as well. He is still an RFA after that one year, so we still have control over him. Very much, I believe, this is McLeod on a prove-it-for-himself type deal. Looking to earn himself uh, possibly a third line type role and type pay where he really had a coming out towards the end of the last regular season and especially in playoffs. He has been a fourth line guy here, even though he was a high draft pick. And this really says to me for him, he wants to prove that even if it's not here, he wants a big deal somewhere else. But again, he is an RFA. We have him under team control. So I think this was very smart from both sides of the deal. Uh, Jeremy Grolew uh, also was not tenured by us, became an unrestricted free agent. Uh, we brought Eric Shalgren in on a one-year, two-way deal in free agency. Uh, we know Dawes is out for quite a while with an in injury, and that Schmidt is looking almost like a lock. Uh, even Tom is saying it uh, for starting the year here with the big club. So we needed somebody down in Utica to shore up the goalie position there while injuries work their way out and whatever else happens with the goalie position. And so Shalgren was brought in for that. I still think there's a chance he might end up in a backup position here at the NHL level. But seeing how the org is moving with Schmid, uh, I am less confident in that take now than when I had originally said it. So we'll see how exactly that it all plays out. Continuing again on free agency day, obviously a lot happens there. Uh, Jesper Volkvist becomes an unrestricted free agent, ends up signing in Boston. We wish the best of luck to him. We traded a 2025 fifth round pick, so basically the most inconsequential type pick you can really give up for Colin Miller. He is going to be a third line uh, defenseman for us. Uh, his numbers actually look really great. He just fell out of favor there in Dallas. I think this is a low-key great pickup for no cost, essentially. And I think he could also end up being a really great pairing with Nemich when he works his way into the roster. So we will see exactly how he works his way into our system and plays. I always give a lot of slack for first guys first year in a system, especially ours. So um, he is bottom pairing, uh, so not too much pressure on him at all. Still, high hopes for him, and I think he will be a great fit with our team. Obviously, as we know, tied in with Michael McLeod, Nate Bastian got his extension as well. His is a two-year deal, though, so this does walk him to unrestricted free agency. Uh, but having him on those two years is great. I think he's one of the best fourth-line wingers in the league. Pairing him with McLeod, who he has insane synergy with for at least this year, if not the next, is also fantastic for us, him, and the team because he will be an unrestricted free agent after this, and that would really be the time for him to get his bag. Very likely, if he plays to the level we think he can, we will not be able to afford to keep him unless he does take a discount to stay here to chase cups with us. So we will see how it plays out, but hey, we got him for these two years. Let's make the most of him. 
Mason Geertsen became an unrestricted free agent. I know he was uh, memeified, lovified in the community, uh, but he is now gone along with the guy who was of a higher skill level, but uh, same pedigree in that meme love hate type relationship with the fans. And that was Miles Wood also. Miles Wood also hitting unrestricted free agency. Ended up signing six years in Colorado. No shot, no chance we were giving him that contract here. So, hey, Wood, I'm very happy you got your bag. Enjoy it. Go blow it all on cryptocurrency, uh, as you seem to always be on those calls, even in uh, the locker room right after practices and stuff. So, See how that plays out with McKinnon in the room. You know, who knows? Uh, another guy who ended up becoming an unrestricted free agent, and we did not qualify him, was Talviti. Um, in the organization a while, I know there was at points hopes that he was going to be something here. Clearly it did not work out that way, but hey, we're just too stacked for guys like this to get a running chance with us. Wish him the best of luck. Uh, a few other guys, uh, Gael Sen, uh, Zachary Emin, uh, Brian Pinho. Uh, all left in unrestricted free agency, as well as Joseph Gombardella, Robbie Russo, Zach Hayes, Timur Umrugavov, uh, and technically uh, Jonathan Bernier. And as we know, he ended up officially retiring as well. A couple other low-key signings, just to breeze through these. We had Justin Dolan coming in on a two-year, two-way contract. Kyle Crisculo on a one-year, two-way contract as well. And yeah, that really rounded out uh, the official free agency day for us. Uh, and then we've had a handful of other moves since then. Uh, Chris Tierney came in as an unrestricted free agent on a one-year, two-way contract. This really is a uh, injury uh, stopgap as well as a outside-of-our-control stopgap for our fourth-line center position. Just see what happens there. We have a few different guys, including Tomasz Nosek, who was brought in uh, five days after Tierney. Same thing, he is, uh, but he is on a one-year, uh, one-way deal. So he clearly will take up the spot, I believe, before Tierney, unless Tierney absolutely plays his way into the position during training camp. Uh, we also signed um, Kevin Ball to a two-year contract. Organization has high, high, huge, huge hopes for Ball, as we all do as well. Uh, he will still be a, un, uh, a restricted free agent after that deal. So uh, I believe at that time, though, he will have arbitration rights. So we'll see uh, what the trajectory for him is going to be. I mean, our top four is very stacked. Uh, so we'll see what his opportunities end up being. Uh, we'll, we'll still have Marino. We'll still have Seags. Obviously, Luke, Dougie, Nemec coming in. Uh, our defense core is looking pretty locked up and stacked, in my opinion, for the years to come. So very excited to see what Ball really keeps growing into. He has been fantastic so far for us, given what we thought he could be. I mean, I was high on him after the trade, but he has blown past even those expectations for me. Uh, and I hope he continues on that trajectory. Last real move was Cal Foote coming on a one-year, two-way contract. Depth defenseman again. Maybe he plays his way up, but I don't really truly see it. Uh, it's really just, I mean, his brother is very likely going to be fighting for a spot in the main club. And if he doesn't make it here, both of them down in Utica will be real nice for the family. Uh, and that really did it for our full off-season moves. Obviously, the big ones were re-signing our boys, Brett and Timo, and then the trade for Toffoli. But low-key, Colin Miller was a fantastic move. And then the stop gaps for 4C as well, really shoring up the team. That really did it. Uh, it was a great offseason. No real big UFA signing as we've had in years past. Uh, but even all that said, you can still argue we won the offseason by not making a silly unrestricted free agent signing. Really played our cap smart, really structured our contracts very well, and just setting up our team for a ton of success. Can't wait for tomorrow. Again, it's probably very likely just going to be physicals, not actual guys on the ice. But hopefully maybe we get a few interviews or at least some tidbits. But at the very least, we'll get the roster. Uh, I will go over all that if the information is out by the time I record tomorrow morning. And if not, I might go a little bit more in-depth about how last year's rookie camp uh, training camp started out. Uh, and we'll see what the differences end up being between that year and this year. So that will do it for today. It is the still start of the work week on a Tuesday. Let's go ahead and get through this one uh, into the weekend where we will finally get some actual Devils games. Even if it's just a prospect tournament, I will still be checking out every single one of those. And of course, providing my feedback to you guys as I do every morning. So that being said, I'll see everyone tomorrow morning as always and forever. Let's go Devils.